Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we're going to be talking about the best 2023 romance releases. These are all books that I read in 2023 that came out in 2023 that I think are absolutely fantastic, that are absolutely worth the read, that I think are the best of the best of the releases that came out this past year. We're gonna be going in release order. This book came out all the way back in February, um, but this is Our Jaws Resonance by Miss Ruby Dixon. I actually have a whole entire dedicated video of me reading this book live for you, giving you my opinions, thoughts. I believe it's spoiler free, so I'll link it down below if you're interested. But this is the first book in her newest series, the Ice Planet Clone series, which is a spinoff to Ice Planet Barbarians and the Ice Home series. So all three of those series, including this one, take place on the planet Not Hot. And this is about Arjal. We've met him in the Ice Home series and him finding his mate, his resonance mate. If you don't know about Ice Planet Barbarians, what are you doing here? <laughs> you should probably know about them already because of like my obvious love from Miss Ruby Dixon. So <laughs> are you surprised if you're like, this is your first video? Hello, hi. Um, but if it's not, I'm surprised you don't already know that I am a huge Ruby stan and love everything with Ruby. So this for sure was a favorite release of mine this year. She also came out with book two in this series, but I haven't read that one yet. I know I need to. I know I'm normally on the top of my game with Ruby books and Ruby releases, but I just have not found the time to read that one yet. But this one is definitely a gem. Okay. There's also like a step back. Every book in this series is going to have like this beautiful step back on the back. I love that because you only see that really in historicals. You don't see that in alien romances. Again, I can't really say too much more about this because I don't want to spoil it, but I do recommend reading the other two series before you get to this one. I'm not the reading police. You can do whatever you want, but in my humble opinion, you would get a much better reading experience if you've read the other books first. <laughs> At least a few in both series. You know what I mean? Because you gotta know about Ice Power Variants, the main series, and then you gotta read some of Ice Home because that's when our hero like pops in is with the Ice Home books. So at least like dabble your way through a few of those. You'll have to read all of them. But like familiarize yourself, you know? Rain Me In by Kayla Gross is my next one. I had seen this one floating around Instagram and just needed it in my life. <laughs> I read this back when Cowboy Romances were like all the rage, back when Heartless, Powerless, like all those were coming out, um, like Elsie Silver books. And I saw this cover with a beautiful plus sized woman and this sudden looking cowboy. And I was like, who I need that now. I didn't even, I don't think I've even read the summary. I saw the cover and I was like, I need that now. That just goes to show like representation totally matters. And there's a reason why people should be putting plus size people on their covers because a lot of books don't put their plus size characters on the cover. And it is giving such a disservice because that is the reason why I wanted to pick this book up. I love to see body diversity. I love to see representation. And this book is absolutely stunning. This is a romance between Blake and Gavin. Blake is our heroine in here. And she has not lived in her small town for a few years, ever since her brother ended up passing away. He ended up passing away due to an accident with a horse and Blake has never ridden a horse since then. She has a little bit of PTSD because of it, because of what happened to her brother when he was on a horse. Anyway, so it's a few years later, her mother has just recently gotten injured and she can't really do anything around the ranch. So she decides to come back for a few months and help her mom out around the ranch and help her dad as well. One of her first nights back, her dad ends up kind of like peer pressuring her, roving her in to going to the country bar that's in town. Um, and that's where Gavin, our hero, works at. Um, he is a highly coveted server there <laughs> who also is like in charge of the mechanical bull as well. And he sees Blake and he's like smitten right from the get go. He always had a crush on Blake growing up. Gavin was her younger brother's best friend. So she's a little bit older than him, but he does not care. He's like, that woman is absolutely stunning. This is maybe finally my shot to get her. Um, so he kind of, like her dad, peer pressures her a little bit to ride the mechanical bull. Little does he know about her past trauma. Um, and so she's not very happy with him and he grovels his butt off afterward. And he comes crawling on hands and knees to at least go on a date with him, at least give him a chance. This book does seem really cute and really sweet and fun at times, but there's also very serious moments in here because of what Blake's experienced and gone through and the trauma that she's experienced and the loss that they've had in their family. So, but this book, definitely worth the read. I absolutely love it. This book came out all the way back in April, but I read it in December. This is The Plus One by Maisie Eddings. This is her newest book in the A Brush With Love 
series. I've read all the books also in this series this year, um, but this one I think is the only one that came out in 2023. I adored this, which is really interesting because I think a lot of people have it flipped where other books in the series are their favorite and this one isn't, but I absolutely love this one. This one is about Indira and Jude and it's kind of like a little bit rivals or animosity to lovers. So Indira, at the beginning of the story, finds her boyfriend cheating on her. She has nowhere else to turn to except her brother because she has nowhere else to stay. She's like, I'm leaving. She packs up her cat, a few of her belongings and is like, I'm going to my brother's house. She she opens the door and there is her brother's best friend who just happens to be like her childhood nemesis, Jude. Jude is gonna be staying with her brother for a little bit until her brother's wedding because he got a uh, leave in order to go to the wedding. He is the best man. However, Jude is having a lot of internal struggle right now. He, the only way he could pay for college was to enlist and be a doctor overseas in war-torn countries. And he has unfortunately lost more patients than he has saved them. And it has absolutely affected him in a very negative way. And he is absolutely dreading going back. So this book deals with mental health, which I loved. I loved seeing that. I connected to Jude in so many ways. People have different types of traumas and different things that they're going through in life. But the way that he talked about what he's going through and what he's feeling is like, oh my gosh, so many of us have felt that in our lives. I have not experienced the same thing he has, you know what I mean? But the way that he talks about what he's experiencing and the trauma that he has and how he deals with it is very relatable. So the two of them are gonna be staying in the guest rooms that her brother has at his house. And they have like a conjoined like bathroom, you know what I mean? So like here are the two bedrooms and the bathrooms in between. Um, and so it's kind of like forced proximity. Um, and then they also decide to fake date because her ex who was cheating on her is actually one of the people in the wedding party. Sorry if the camera angle changed. <laughs> My tripod just like kablooied. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, they have to fake date because her ex um who the one who cheated on her is actually in the wedding party and he's gonna be bringing his date with him which is the woman that she saw him cheating with um and so the hero of the story jude has like totally agreed to fake date indira i really enjoy this one especially for the mental health representation this next one also came out in april which is if only you by chloe lisa of course i had to put the bergman brother release of this year in this video um, the things sticking out of the top are two art prints that I got. I think I got these at Book Bonanza. She had a bunch of art prints for her newest books. Um, but these are our two characters. I absolutely love them. This is Ziggy and Sebastian. Look at how stunning they are. They are perfect. So as I said before, this is about Ziggy and Sebastian. Ziggy is a Bergman sister. You've read about her in the previous books in the Bergman Brothers series. And this is her her romance story. Um, so Ziggy is autistic and she is a professional soccer player. And this is her romance with a guy who was on her brother's hockey team named Sebastian. So Ziggy really wants to start being taken seriously and not be seen as like the baby of the family. So she approaches Sebastian and is like, you're kind of like the bad boy on the hockey team. And I kind of want to like make my reputation a little bit more edgy. Um, how about uh, we decide to be friends, like fake friends. She wants to do it for publicity, goodness, I can't say that word, publicity reasons. Then obviously fake friends turns into them spending more time together, which leads to them developing feelings, which leads to them falling in love. I really love this addition to this series that I'm absolutely in love with. We read this book for the Chronically Courageous Book Club hosted by me and Brie from In Love and Words. We're actually gonna be starting that book club back up in 2024, so be very excited. We took a little bit of a break, but we're starting it back up again next year. But yeah, we this is one of the books that we read and it was so fun to discuss with everybody in the comments, with Brie, and um, I really enjoyed this. The hero also has celiac disease, which is the condition that I have, the autoimmune disease that I have. Um, so I really enjoyed that representation because I also know its own voices because Chloe also has celiac. One that absolutely wrecked me is The Coldest Winter by Brittany Cherry. This one came out all the way back in April as well. There was a bunch of April releases in this video, um, but man, this book. Who I read this as an arc. I am on Brittany's influencer arc team. And so I got to read an early copy of this. Brittany actually sent this book my way. It is absolutely beautiful inside. Like I love this woman. This is a romance between Starlet and Milo. Starlet lives this 
seemingly perfect life. She has the perfect boyfriend, perfect future career, perfect family, um, but then that all comes to an end when her relationship kind of implodes and she doesn't really know what she's doing with her life. But then she starts up her student teaching because she is an education major. She starts up her student teaching semester at a high school and sitting like in the classroom is the guy she hooked up with at a college party like a few weeks ago and she is in total shock so that's milo our hero in here had no idea that he was in high school but he is 18 and he looks very old for his age um so think of that what you will so she's a little older than him but um i'll just leave it there i don't want to spoil it um but i really loved this this book like wrecked my heart but then obviously put it back together like many brandy books do done and dusted by lila sage was another big release this year this is a cowboy romance another cowboy romance this one is about emmy and brooks so emmy comes back to a very small town after having a pretty bad fall off of a horse i think she's a barrel racer and she experienced a fall that made her kind of scared to get back in the saddle um so she just comes back home she's like i don't really know what to do so i'm just gonna go back home there she bumps in to luke brooks luke is her brother's best friend and they never really got along at all growing up but brooks is very captivated by emmy when she comes back into town this book is really cute but it's also so hot so like don't think it's only cute because they could be hot um so and i'm also really excited for lila sage because this book did get picked up by a publisher this year as well there's also amazing own voices adhd representation which i very much appreciated another book that we picked up for the chronically courageous book club this year is mickey chambers shakes it up by cherish reed we actually make sure to pick up newer releases that are coming out this year or have come out recently um that have chronic illness neurodivergence so that's what we decided to do we just found this book because our lovely friend zay dm'd me and heard about it and we were like oh my gosh that sounds so good let's read it we've never read from this author before we knew nothing about this book it was an amazing surprise this is the romance between mickey and diego so mickey is a college professor she teaches a college writing course and diego owns a bar in town so mickey decides to get another job she waltzes in to diego's bar and ends up getting a job there um but diego is her boss and she soon realizes they soon realize that diego is also in her college writing class and so it's kind of like doubly forbidden because she is his teacher but then he is her boss i loved the bar setting it was so fun and i really just love the representation here as well the heroine has hyperthyroidism so that was the representation that we read about in this book and it's just like grumpy sunshine diego has a mouth on him okay this was so good. Very underrated. More people need to pick this one up. It was so good. Obviously, Out on a Limb <laughs> is on this list for me. Um, I could talk about this book all day. This book is going to be in favorite videos that are going to be coming up. So just like buckle in. Um, but I'm not going to go too deep into this because I talk about this book all the time. Um, but this was Hannah Bonham Young's release that she came out with this year. It has own voices representation for limb difference with their character, main character, Wynn. And Bo, our hero, also has a disability. He is an amputee. So Wynn and Bo end up meeting at a Halloween party one night and um, things go fantastically well for the both of them. But they don't really expect to see the other person even though they had a fantastic time. The banter between the two was great. The time between each other, fantastic okay but then when finds out she's pregnant and uh things change she ends up moving in with Bo. Bo like opens his house up with open arms because she doesn't live in a safe place and he wants to be heavily involved in this baby's life because he honestly never thought that he, he would be able to have children because of some of the things he's experienced before um so he's like full on ready buckled in to help win with this pregnancy to like be in this baby's life um but they decide to keep their like relationship kind of like platonic not romantic because they don't want to like ruin the chance of this great family that they could have with this baby and if things don't work out between the two of them that's gonna suck so let's just be friends but they honestly cannot help themselves because they just fall in love with this person like head on i love this book so much i love this author i love the writing i love everything about this book it's my favorite book of the year for what is a book that I read literally like last week? This is Kissing Kosher. It's by Jean Melser. And I heard about this book from Tiff. <laughs> and oh my gosh, she like totally got me hooked onto this book. And I'm so eternally grateful. This is like a holiday looking read. This does start out like in the holiday season, but then it like goes through the different seasons throughout the year. So it does start out in the holiday season, but then it goes throughout it. So like, I don't know if I necessarily categorize this as a holiday book um and this book also came out all the way back in august so <laughs> this is the romance between avital and ethan they're both i think like 24 avital is 
the co-owner and general manager of Best Babka, which is a kosher Jewish family owned bakery. Abital is experiencing quite a lot of chronic pain. Um, her chronic pelvic pain is not letting up and it's debilitating. Like she is in so much pain and day-to-day -day life is hard for her. Then Ethan comes swooping in with a resume to apply to work at Best Babka and he ends up working there. Um, and he kind of lessens Abital's load and figures out the best way to be her shoulder, be the person she can lean on. But little does everyone else know in this bakery that Ethan has ulterior motives to working at Best Babka. The reason why I love this book so much is obviously because of the chronic pain representation. It was absolutely fabulous. I loved it. I did not love reading about Abital's pain at points because it's a lot of pain that a lot of us have experienced, but it was really relatable. Like I hate how relatable it was. I love how caring Ethan was. I love a man who's gonna caretake for their heroin. Like I swoon over that crap so hard. Like I will become a puddle for it. Um, so Ethan is definitely a new book boyfriend for me. And the last release that I have to talk about, the book that came out all the way back in November of this year, is Dukes and Deeks by Tori Jean. I actually also have a signed version of this with like a few goodies. Like, isn't that so cool? Like, look at that. I love that. <laughs> and then some stickers, um, cause the hero is a hockey player. So it has like hockey player stickers in here, which is cool. Tori Jean is absolutely fantastic. It was her newest release this year. I love her a lot. And um, I've read like every single book by her now. She only has three books out, but I love her. I love her books. I love her writing. Um, and she has endometriosis representation and like, every single one of her books and its own voices. This one's about Jack and Ali. I don't know if I'm pronouncing her name right. It's A-U-L-I-E. It's French. I'm gonna say Ali, but I don't know. Please correct me. Please correct me in the comments. Anyway, so it's about Ali and her best friend Jack and their romance. So Ali runs this Jane Austen fair in town once a year where like every week they'll put on a different like like cosplay show of a Jane Austen novel. And um, the one that she needs help with is obviously Pride and Prejudice. And the actors who were originally hired to play Wickham and Lydia have run off together and actually eloped and gotten married themselves. And so she's like, crap, who's gonna be Lydia? Who's gonna be Wickham? Like those are iconic characters. Someone needs to fill their shoes. And so she can only fill in herself for Lydia. And then her best friend, Jack, who is benched currently from the hockey season because he did something he was not supposed to do um it's like i'll help you out let's do it he doesn't really know what he's getting into <laughs> um but man this like role-playing situation between lydia and wickham like them as characters it kind of like opens the door for their unrequited romance that they've had for years like they've always felt this way for each other and like this situation kind of like opens that door to them maybe admitting their feelings. I love this one a lot. It was so fun. Um, I obviously love the endometriosis representation. I really love this one. I appreciate it a lot because you don't read a lot of books where you go through the diagnosis with the character. Um, I've read quite a few of those, like little compared to other disability chronic illness rep books that I've read. Um, you don't read a lot where you take the journey with the character of being diagnosed with your medical condition. Um, so I really loved that aspect of this story. So love this book, love Tori Jean. Please pick this one up if you haven't yet. Anyways, there you have it. Those were 10 of my favorite releases that came out in 2023. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And what was your favorite new release from 2023? I would love to know. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a goat emoji in the comment section down below. If you've read Dukes and Deeks, you know, you know what's up. <laughs> You know, I wanted to go. Anyway, uh, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye, y'all.